semi-final. Um, what are your initial feelings? Well, I didn't reach the semi-final. Oh, can I start that again? <laughs> no. <laughs> You're recording. I know you don't have any questions anymore. Okay, right. Did you hear what he said? <laughs> you take it or we won't be answering any questions. <laughs> okay, right. Congratulations reaching the final, Dirk. <laughs> um, it was just a semi-final. What you... <laughs> How do you feel on reaching the final? You must be over the moon. Yeah, of course I'm over the moon. Okay, and I have to ask you: it was it was it was a it was a comfortable win in the end? But after the second set, there was obviously Simon appeared to be sort of slowing the match down. Did that obviously you had to get through that period of time and deal with that? <laughs> I was like, if you need tricks, you're scared and I'll beat you. That's what I thought. Okay. You, you seem to take time at the back of the stage to sort of to sort of take it all in and try to deal with it. Was that right? Yeah, it was. Because I don't mind playing slow players as long as you know what they're doing. And now I play the player who normally plays a quick game, but now he starts playing slower than Brennan Dolan. Which you don't mind to play, because you know if, if you play Brendan Dolan, you know what he does. He's always normal slow, but he always is slow. And now you're playing a player who normally plays fast, and now he starts playing very, very slow. And I thought like, well, you only do that if you're not comfortable to win. And I thought I'll step in that, because I'm comfortable to win. Is that why at the end you were quite smiley and quite happy, because you know you'd come through that? No, that was not about that. In the end, I was like, well, Dirk, you didn't start a 152 at all in this game. You did it in the previous game. So I was like, well, we'll do it now. And I, I went up, double 16, treble 20. He's like, yeah, 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 we'll do it now. That's why I was smiling. And just finally, tomorrow, you could win 120,000 euros. Um, how many aubergines can you buy for 120,000 euros? Ask my boss. I don't mind. I'm not here for the money, mate. I'm here to win. Okay, well, listen, congratulations, Dirk. It was great to speak to you again. Thank you. Yes, man. Yes. Dirk, many congratulations on reaching the final. We've spoken this week about how things have turned around for you this year. Do you think you're the perfect example to players who drop off the tour that there is a road, road back and it's not the end? No, I'm just a bad example. <laughs> and... You know, what would it mean to you tomorrow if you were to, to go on and, and lift your, your first major title? Well, we'll see tomorrow, but uh, for now, I'm just happy to win my game I won tonight. And tomorrow, we'll see who we play and hopefully I'll perform well. Every day I went on stage and I wasn't in the stage to win it. I was here. Show them what you can do. Play well. If you play well, you probably win, but you can lose as well if you play well. But um, until now, I didn't lose when I played well. Just wondering, how are the energy levels? And do you feel that there's still one big performance left in you tomorrow? I was tired tonight. I didn't sleep at all because I was too uh, busy in my head. I think I, I probably didn't even sleep for five hours. I probably slept for three and a half to four hours. I was so tired. So. I will be happy if I sleep well tonight so I can be fully fit tomorrow. Okay, thank you, Dirk. Congratulations on reaching the final. Cheers, mate. Dirk, um, obviously it was your first major semi-final this evening. Lots of players have seemed to feel the pressure there, but you look like you, re you really enjoyed yourself. Well, I enjoyed it, but I really felt the pressure, mate, all day. <laughs> but to be honest... When I played Gary Anderson, I woke up at 7.30, something like that. Yes, I think it was 7.30. And my hands were sweaty when I woke up. And today I felt the pressure, but it wasn't as much nerves as it was when I played Gary. Because I think I was a big underdog when I played Manchester Sufi, because I was 7-0 seven, seven down in, uh, in conversations. And I was 10-2 down against Dimi. I was 6 5 nil down against Gary. But against Simon, I was 2-1 two, two up. And I beat him once on a, a big exhibition. It was 3-1 up. And the one time I lost, I thought I could have won as well. So for me, it changed everything. Because I played uh, the first three games, I played players who always 
beat me easily. And I was in, um, how do you say it? Uh, individual conversations. I was so far down. But now I played someone who I was in front of on individual conversation. So I was like, yeah, I can beat him. You talk about pressure. Are you putting any any pressure on yourself tomorrow? Or are you just going up there and, and throwing how you have done all week? What would you think? I'm going to say the would, second one. Would, would it be strange if the lowest uh, qualifying person on the ranking, because I'm on the 73 qualifying, and the, the 31, or, or the one, the lowest qualified player in this tournament is number 45, and now I made the final and I'm still below number 45. Would you think there's any pressure on me? I don't think so, Dirk. No, but there is. I always want to win. <laughs> thank, you, right, Dirk. thank you very much, Dirk. Thank you. Yes, Take I suppose, uh, Dirk, uh, did you watch um, Simon Whitlock uh, versus Michael Van Gerwen last night? Yes, and yes I, I did, suppose, Mike. And I suppose Simon was practically flawless and he mentioned to us afterwards he felt he gave the perfect performance. Uh, in terms of your performance there tonight, you improved in terms of your 180s. You hit an awful lot of 180s there tonight. So that is um, something, obviously, that you obviously improved on there tonight. I don't know. I didn't feel I played my best game of the tournament. But <clears throat> I saw Simon yesterday. And after that, he took an interview and he said, I won't take Dirk slightly. But if you say that, you're taking me slightly. Because if you play Michael van Gerwen, you won't say I'll take him slightly. But if you play someone who you think you can beat, you tell him I'll take him slightly. So it's like, yeah. Well, he tries not to underestimate me. Underestimate me. Yeah, underestimate me. But if you tell him I'll I'll try, oh, I won't underestimate him. You're doing it already. Because hmm. otherwise you don't have to tell. Because if you play Michael Van Gerwen, you don't have to say, I won't underestimate Michael Van Gerwen. Because you know he's way better. But if you're saying, I will try not to underestimate him, you're thinking, I win this easily. And if you say that, I was like, yeah, okay. There were all signs of you underestimating me. And uh, you mentioned that. Um, did Dirk, did it psychologically, did it annoy you, that sort of statement? Did it drive that motivation? I'll show you there tonight. No, I was just laughing because of, well, not laughing, but I was like, people ask me, who did you prefer, Michael or Simon? I said, well, normally I would always say my, uh, Simon, but if he plays like this, I prefer Michael. Because if he plays 100 average, it's, it's, it's almost unbeatable in a double in the blow. But yeah, I, I cheered when he beat Michael. Not, not, not in a regular thing, because I always like Michael to win. But for myself, I was like, yeah, well, I've got a better chance against Simon than against Michael. And I suppose, uh, Dirk, if you look at your path to the final, you've taken down an awful lot of big guns. And I suppose you can add Simon mm -hmm. Whitlock to Gary Anderson. And I suppose in, in terms of that sort of final, if you win it, I suppose you, you look back on, on Savory and you look at the list of names that you have uh, taken down in terms of winning the World Grand Prix. I suppose that's obviously as a... A professional darts player, you want to take down the big names in terms of winning a tournament. I don't know. People say you have to beat everyone to win, and I always say you have to win five games to win. Hmm. And uh, sometimes people say, Yeah, you won because you didn't play the other player. And I say, Yeah, well, I beat his, I, I beat the guy who beat him. Hmm. So, I'm better than the guy who beat him. So, yeah, I don't mind whoever you play. Um, the only thing you can't do anything about is the, guy, is the opponent you play. Because you, you can't do anything about him beating a better player or a worse player. You just play the guy you play. And people can say you're lucky because you have an easy draw. And the easy draw might be happened because an easy draw beat a very good player. So why is it an easy draw then? 
And I suppose lastly, for, for me, Dirk, uh, I suppose an interesting question. What's going to be your daily routine now of the final from when you get up in terms of what you eat and maybe going for a walk to relax? And what, what is going to be your sort of routine in the lead up maybe two hours or three hours before the final? Well, I got a knee injury, so I'll be asking for some eyes. Go into bed, put eyes on my knee, and hopefully it will be all right tomorrow. And yeah, for the rest, it will be the same as every day. Uh, cheers, uh, Dirk, and best of luck. Thank you, mate. Ja, Dirk, uh, van harte gefeliciteerd. Je staat in de finale van de, van de Grand Prix. Uh, um, wordt de vierde Nederlander die daar staat. 